My name is Nancy Tour with the National Western Stock Show Board, and I'm here today talking with Leslie Lang, yeah. who's the chair of the Stock Show Equestrian Committee. So, Leslie, tell us a little bit about the general format of the committee, and then I want to focus more on the equestrian programs that we're doing for youth at Stock Show. Great, Nancy. Well, um, as you said, I'm chairman of the Horse Executive Committee here at the National Western Stock Show, and I believe we have six or seven members that come from a wide range of disciplines all throughout Colorado. Hunter Jumper, Rainers, Horse Show, Western Divisions, Rainers, etc. And I think we have gathered together in order to try to better the equine industry in Colorado at the stock show and provide opportunities for all avenues of equestrian sports at the National Western Stock Show. And a couple of years ago, you guys took a big step mm -hmm. to set up a number of specific youth scholarship activities at Stock Show. Tell me about the three that you set up. Well, we have three youth uh, programs. We have the Youth Equestrian Showcase, which is an educational program for children that also provides scholarship opportunity. And then we have the Youth Ranch Horse Mentor Matchup Program, which is geared more towards the Western horses and those Children get to interact and have be mentored by a professional in an industry. They get a day's worth of teaching and that culminates with competition and money's awarded there as well. And then we have the um, Youth Freestyle Showcase. So what that is, is we have brought youth kids in from Colorado who participate and do a freestyle routine during our open freestyle mm, here. Okay. And as you know, the National Western Stock Show Freestyle is one of yeah. the, if not the best freestyle in the U.S. So we have a lot of kids that have participated in contests, freestyle contests, other places, the State Fair would have one. So we thought that it would be great to bring in some of our outstanding youth freestyle members and showcase them. Uh, we have a very educated uh, audience here mm -hmm. for the freestyle. Yes. And so um, we've done this, I think this would have been our third year for our youth freestyle program and the audience loves it. They're amazed that the kids are actually as talented as some of our open freestyle riders. So we've tried to broaden our horizons and provide opportunities for young, young equestrians. Yeah, I think it's really interesting how you've hit kind of three different levels. Sure. The showcase where they don't have to be a real skilled equestrian. Right. It's more about what they want to learn and, mm -hmm. and how they want to demonstrate that. The ranch horse where they get to work with a trainer, so they're coming along and now they're working with a trainer and then the, the real competitor. The freestyle. Uh, the yeah. freestyle, Those which is are, a high level of competition. It is. Rainy. So was that kind of your thinking at the beginning was to hit those levels? It was, is we wanted to have a broad base and um, the youth equestrian showcase actually started kind of as a brainchild for kids who didn't even necessarily had horses. Wow. Might lease a horse or might yeah. go and work at a riding stable, but were in the horse industry and loved it. And so um, we've tweaked that over the years, but and a lot, some of our kids don't own their own horses. Some have access to a neighbor's horse. And so they can do their video with a neighbor's horse or a friend's horse or something like that. So we wanted to try to touch base. They didn't all have to have horse ownership. Right. Um, so once you add that horse ownership element into it, you know, expense, time, you know, there's a lot of kids who are horse crazy whose folks can't afford it. Yeah. Don't live in a place where they do, but they can go to a riding stable and use a friend's horse. So we really thought it was highly important to try to include those kids um, as well that don't own a horse, but are horse crazy. You know, all of us little girls grew up being horse crazy. Some of us were lucky enough to grow up on a ranch and had access, but there's a lot of kids out there that don't. And we also felt that it was important to provide that opportunity to children to broaden their agricultural based uh, horizon, so to speak, and bring education to kids who are not naturally, uh, that don't grow up in it, you know, like we did. Yeah, I think I love the fact that you hit different disciplines because sure. as those of us who've been in the business for a long time know, horsemanship is horsemanship. I mean, there's centuries of development of knowledge of, of how to train horses and raise horses and keep them healthy and the the uh, anatomy and the the care and it doesn't matter what discipline you're in no. the basic commonality is the horse yeah and those and things are that. those things are equal across the disciplines yeah. you know and my dad used to tell me um, he said you know horsemanship Basic horsemanship is really easy. He says, well, you have one leg on either side, and <laughs> yeah. as he would say, you know, your butt in the middle. Right. And from there, it just grows. Yeah. Um, but basic horsemanship, care, uh, all those things, as you mentioned, are so important. And you never know when you might grasp a young person 
who doesn't have access to a horse as far as their parents can't own it, but they will parlay that into an education and they could grow up and come into the horse industry right. um, from a background that truly isn't agricultural or equine, or equine related. Yeah. So what surprised you most about the program? Um, I think, I, and I shouldn't say I am surprised, but the quality of students that we've had, say in the Youth Equestrian Showcase, um, when we do our interviews and those kids outline their SMART goals and then we look at their storyboards, obviously the age group for those kids, 14 to 21, you know, with a child, there's a difference between a 14-year-old and a 20-year-old. Yeah. And yeah. So typically, you know, some of our kids that are our winners are our little older kids, mm -hmm. but those younger kids keep coming and it's been fun to watch the progression of some of those children. And what has surprised me is how really intelligent and committed they are and just that they love it and they live and breathe it. And so I, I shouldn't say it surprises me, but it, it encourages me. And it's what you'd hoped for. Yes, it's it what really it encourages what... me. And we take, I think, 10 applications is what we narrow it down to, and then we do interviews. And you know, we've really had high quality kids that have um, applied. We've seen some that came in that applied that were maybe not sure what to expect. Mm -hmm. So some yeah. of their presentation was you know, they were young, but several of them have taken that experience and then applied the next year and the next year and you just see the growth and the evolution of them. So you kind of see them going from kidhood to, yeah. to adulthood. Yeah. So you yeah. get to see that journey of their maturation and, and their knowledge grows as well. Well, and as, again, those of us in the industry know how many life lessons yeah. children learn from horses. Yes. And I love the fact that this expands it, not just from the horse, but into the public speaking, yeah. the development of a concept, how to explain that concept, the goal, working. I think this is just an incredible way to tie to the equestrian side of it, but to teach them so many different skills. And what we've tried to do too, um, like in the Youth Equestrian Showcase, we interview them, but now we're looking in the future to where we can maybe have a round table so they can start asking us questions. Because yeah. a lot of us on the Horse Executive Committee who conduct the interviews, been in the horse business, you know, way too long to admit. And really, I think those kids would gain knowledge asking us questions and finding out that we really started out maybe just like they did. We do that in the mentor matchup a little bit and we want to expand on that in some of our other programs. Um, we had a pizza party last year for our mentor matchup and it kind of took off more than what we thought in that the, those students were talking with the mentors. They had not been matched up yet so they were just having general conversations with all of the professionals and I think the kids loved it. Just getting to know them as people yeah. and not as those professionals that they see that are you know, up on those pedestals and they find out that we put our pants on the same way they, that they do and we started out a lot of the same way. Yeah. And you know, you see them competing in different venues around the state or nationally because we have a tremendous amount of national equine exhibitors here in Colorado. And those youngsters see those people on that stage and they're a little bit, uh, they feel like you, they're not real, that they yeah. can't touch yeah, them. Yeah, I can't talk to you them. You know, yeah. and I can't talk to them. And so when you get them, those folks that volunteer their time to those mentor matchup programs, they're there for the kids and whatever they need. And I think those children are a bit surprised maybe at how normal we all yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all people. That we're yeah. all just normal too. Yeah. And well, that mystique that surrounds some of the professionals right. really truly isn't there. It's just a function of their business yeah. and their dedication to their, their clients. Right. Right. But I would say everybody that's on our horse executive committee um, is truly vested in youth development. So, you know, the programs have changed and some of our stock show activities, equestrian, have become more specialized. And so we've tried to find ways that we can involve children, education, scholarship act, act opportunities. So, Leslie, if you were talking to a young person who's thinking about applying for one of those three youth uh, programs, what would you tell them? I would tell them to go ahead and apply. Um, obviously, all our youth and, and all of us are goal-oriented and winning-oriented, which there is a prize at the end of the lane, so to speak, but it's the, more about the contacts that those kids are going to make and the connections that they're going to make and the doors that are going to be opened to them. Um, once they participate in a program, whether they're the winner or not, um, they're going to have contacts. They're going to be able to call me and say, hey, I interviewed with you in the Youth Equestrian Showcase 2018. And I'm going to be like, yes, I remember. What can I do for you? So that they've opened doors. And I think the, that is a great tool in their toolbox to learn that they make those contacts and they can utilize them. 
mentor matchup. They worked with one professional, but there's nine other professionals yeah. who are involved in the program too, who might have a little different slant on something that they want to uh, capitalize on in their horse endeavor. So there's that. And the freestyle reining is a little bit more of a showcase, but some of those kids are going to meet freestyle reiners from all over the world, all over the U.S., not just our Colorado freestyle reiners. So again, more contacts that you can create at a young age, I think, is going to put those tools in those kids' toolboxes, and it'll take them a long way. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Don Manuelo with about the Horse Equestrian Program. That is a big interest and love for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, my background was in education. I took a hiatus from National Western between the 1950s and 1980. But then when I started back becoming involved in 1980, during that time that I was in that hiatus, I was in education. And so education is very important to me. I taught and I was became an administrator and a coach. And so all of that is very important to me as far as education and the, the educational programs that National Western provides. Right, education really a key factor in the National Western Stock Show. Absolutely. There are so many opportunities and over 100 scholarships are awarded to the youth in the Colorado and Wyoming area for scholarship. And so that's very important for National Western and it's very important for the youth that are receiving those. Yeah, it really is a key. There are three main programs, the Youth Equestrian Showcase, the Youth Ranch Horse Mentor Matchup, and the Youth Freestyle Reining Showcase. R really, there's something for everyone. What was the objective in the creation of all these programs? Well, it was certainly to get the youth involved. And we looked at different avenues to try to get the interest of youth from different backgrounds to be involved in the equestrian programs. This also gives us a, an opportunity, it gives the youth an opportunity to showcase what kind of talents they do have. But it gives them also an opportunity to meet with some people who are professionals in the industry. And so therefore they get an education that they don't even realize that they're getting during that time that they are in these programs. Right, and as you say, I think well put, it's sort of an avenue for these young people who might not be reached at all without these programs. That's exactly right. So why do you feel these programs are just so important to these young, young people? As I look on my youth and my education, and I know what it has given to me over the years, it's important that we reach out to these youth and, and give them the opportunity to further their education. And through these equestrian programs, they start to develop some standards of life for themselves. Yeah, these people that I have met, the young people who are in it, uh, are very articulate and very serious about what they're doing. They definitely are, and I'm impressed every year when we do live interviews, how articulate these people are and, and how they can express themselves in a manner that is very meaningful. Right. Don, talk, if you will, a little bit about how the horse programs evolved over the years. As far as the youth equestrian programs, this is, this is fairly new to National Western. Right. We have not done this, uh, but because those of us who are on various committees felt that we needed to be doing something more for the youth because of the fact that we seem to be losing out on youth programs we decided that we needed to develop some programs that would involve youth in various kinds of activities that would give us some opportunity to meet with these youth and give them an opportunity to be involved in something other than the normal kinds of activities. 
what would you say to uh, some of the youth who may be seeing this interview and are interested in applying to some of these programs you're talking about? As I indicated earlier, it's, uh, education is very important to me. And so the opportunity to obtain education for whatever that might be in the youth's uh, future, this gives them the opportunity to, to become involved. And I would say that if they need to or, or want to be somewhat educated in all of the things that are going on with National Western and all of the things that are going on in Colorado and all of the things that are going on in the world, this gives them an opportunity to get started on that. So they need to be alert of what is available to them. What a tremendous opportunity too. And I understand that the National Western Scholarship Trust really gets a lot of credit in funding these programs. Yes, they do. And uh, that is so helpful because uh, obviously uh, without that kind of support, uh, we wouldn't be able to offer these kinds of scholarships. Don, as you look back upon your long participation and all you've accomplished at the National Western, can you come up with what you're most proud of? I'm just most proud to be a member of a great team that is responsible for this 16-day event, and I hope that I can continue to be a part of it uh, in the future. For all the right reasons, even these crazy times that we're in right now, the 2021 stock shows we've mentioned is canceled. What do you think you're going to end up missing the most? Well, obviously the people. Sure. And and so uh, I'm going to miss those those friendships, those old acquaintances, and being able to shake somebody's hand and say, oh, I'm so glad to see you. How are you doing? and also the opportunity to meet new people. And that goes on every year. Even though my formal education stopped many years ago, I never pass a day but what I don't learn something else new. So my education is ongoing and I think it's so important that that is a, a part of the National Western team concept. Right. So I would imagine then in 2022, hopefully the stock show is as it was in that year. Uh, you must be looking forward to all of this coming back. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I just hope that it happens as soon as possible yes. because because I can't wait. You can I'm like a little still. kid for Christmas. <laughs> right. Looking with Christmas with the stock. What a great way to put it. Don Menuello with the Horse Equestrian Program talking all about it and your efforts with it. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Hello, this is Nancy Tour, and we're here talking today with some members of the Equestrian Committee about some of the youth programs that have been set up in the last few years. So I'm joined today by John Weaver, a member of the Equestrian Committee here at National Western Stock Show. John, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background in horses? Well, well thanks, because I had nothing else to do this afternoon, so it was great <laughs> to be here. I've been involved in horses most of my life. Uh, my mother, way back then, was the secretary of the Colorado World Growers Association. Uh, her husband was the president of the Denver Livestock Association. So it goes back a long ways. And uh, my family, we've shown horses for uh, a long time, and we raised our kids doing that. And I think it's we realized back then what an advantage it was as we watched not just my boys, but the children that we showed against that they've all grown up to be uh, really quality individuals for the most part. And I think that's uh, really something. And you don't see that until you look back and then uh, you, you see what, what great young folks they are. So with that as a background, when I had the opportunity to join the executive committee, and as we got to speaking and uh, looking for ideas ab about the industry, the youth thing came up to the top. Uh, by not just myself, but the other seven members, they all had similar experiences, how important that youth uh, segment is to the uh, ongoing 
progress and success of the uh, of the uh, National Western Stock Show, not just the National Western, but the whole agriculture community. Yeah, I, I will add on to that because my son showed horses as well. Okay. And the life lessons, um, the growth, the responsibility, responsibility the ethics, the dedication. Uh, the dedication that kids learn. And I'm sure with you as your parents as well, because he and I showed together. You bet. And that quality time we would spend at horse shows, the things I learned when he was a teenager, when we were in the car driving to and from, was probably as valuable as any other time I spent with him. So it's, it's just an incredible way for children to grow up when they have the opportunity. Every weekend we were on the road someplace and you're forced together indirectly and it, it's really a plus. Again, when you look back at that. So we had a little tradition that every time we got in the car on Friday night, we'd put in Willie Nelson and <laughs> on, on the road again. So we'd start off w with that. But that was, uh, yeah, it really was quite a, a bonding experience. And when you when you talk to other folks like yourself, yeah. everybody, everybody nods their head and says, oh yeah, I did that and, and my yeah. kids. So suddenly you realize how important that that whole young segment is the youth segment. And that's what we strived for. In the, so on the committee. when the equestrian committee set up these programs, there were a number of them, but I think the one that you have had the most pride out of was the uh, Youth Equestrian Showcase. Can you tell us a little bit about that program and what it does? Yes, happy to do that. Uh, we wanted to somehow get these children involved, not just to c come to the show and get in a class, but we wanted them to showcase themselves if you would. So uh, after much discussion and many meetings, it was all set up where they would actually apply, fill out forms. Uh, we had interviews, we had videos, they said, so they really had to present themselves. Mm -hmm. And then as we got to the final, the finalists, and then we, we got a number of them, and then there would be 10 finalists as an example, we would uh, chat with them all, have personal interviews at the stock show uh, after they presented themselves and met everybody, and they, they they had different assignments that they got to do that the National Western uh, was kind enough to let them be a part of. And then we got to the final six, and then those six were presented um, at uh, one of the performances in the event center uh, later in the week. Um, and then the, the first and the second place were announced. And, uh, we were pretty excited because we've done that for four years now and we've had $12,000 given back to them. And then after this year, even on a personal virtual presentation, we'll, we'll have 15,000 that we've given out to the youth and their scholarships. And so we're pretty pleased with the way that's done. And it was set up to be not just those that were professional showers, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but those that had been showing and needed to go to the next level. And so that's how that one stepped up. The other two that uh, uh, someone else will speak to, uh, the reining and the ranch work, those are, the, again, a little more advanced mm -hmm. and they work with trainers and mentors. And so we've just kind of stepped up from a lower level uh, uh, in, into uh, a, a little stronger, a little more content and a little more participation. So in the showcase, how did you pick, what were the criteria you used to pick the top two? Uh, primarily the, the interviews, mm -hmm. their personal presentation, and the videos, they were required to send in these videos. And so you could kind of see how they were structured. Did they really care? How did they make the video? I was most impressed with the quality, whether they were just kind of beginning uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or further into the equine industry. I was most impressed by the quality of the individual. It made you feel really good about the youth that were, that were coming up. Uh, and, and that was very comforting. As you look back on the four years, anything that surprised you or anything that made you really happy about uh, the competition? Yes, I think the thing that's, that we were hoping uh, would happen, but it did happen. We had, uh, and I, I brought it with me just because I was, I, I, was, I was so proud of it, I wanted to share that. But out of the, the four years that we've done it, the winners have been from Weldona, Conifer, Loveland, Centennial, Olathe, Fort Lupton, Calhan, Elizabeth, Castle Rock, Brighton, and one from Afton, Wyoming. So it shows the wow. diversity and yeah. how widespread that was. It just wasn't someone from, you know, next door. So that I was most pleased that what we were trying to get done, that was the result of that. Well, and it means the committee must have really done some good outreach 
in order to find these kids and convince them this is really something worth doing. Yes, I'm really pleased to be involved with the other seven people in this committee. They're all real go-getters and everything was totally selfless and everybody had great ideas and it was all about the upcoming youth. It was really good to be a part of that kind of a deal. And as you know, one of the fascinating things to me about the equestrian world is while the disciplines we're in are all different, horsemanship is horsemanship. Horse care, knowledge, right. the history, the learning over centuries about how we work with horses and, and get them to do what we ask them to, those are great lessons for those kids and they will carry with them for the rest of their life. Well, and, it's, and in the old days, I call it the old days, we used to have one horse and you did everything with one horse. And now we've become so specialized in different events that it's kind of changed that, you have these different venues now. But yet it's, it's allowed those people to wherever they were, their discipline, whatever spoke to them the most, they could go in that direction. And that's what was nice about the other uh, opportunities of the, the mentor program with the reining mm -hmm. and, and with the, the cow horse and, and the, the ranch work is that they have that ability to go just in one direction and work with the, the trainers that are- Real specialists. Uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's just, it's a, it's a wonderful overview of everything and it does get, more difficult, the more specialized you get, Oh yes. the more difficult. So what was one of my pet peeves, it's allowed those children as they grow up to learn about, not everybody's first, you, yes. here, here's how you win, <laughs> yes. here's how you lose. Not everyone gets but, a trophy. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and that's, that's the life lesson you were yeah. referring to. Yeah. So those are the good things that, yeah. that I think it's Absolutely. such such advantageous for this for this venue. Well, this is John Weaver, and thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, happy to have be here. With us now, Dr. Marvin Beeman with the Horse Equestrian Program. Dr. Beeman, thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. My pleasure. So nice to see you. And I know you're heavily involved with the youth program at the Horse Show at the National Western and, in fact, are a member of the National Western Stock Show Horse Executive Committee. So let's talk first a little bit about you and your background and how that sort of naturally led to your participation and your love of these equestrian programs. And we know you're a Colorado native. I I've been, was involved with the horse program for a long time before we had these kind of issues. And I, I've seen the value of the horse industry relevant to the other parts of the agricultural industry that the National Western has. It's a, horses are, as you know, they're classified as not pets, right. as, as horses, right. as exactly. an agricultural industry factor. And it became obvious to me that it was very important to have the horse segment of the National Western be a significant part of it, along with the rest of it. And that's how I got involved. They had asked me to be the veterinarian for the horse part of the program. There was a veterinarian for the cattle and the other animals. And so you saw that integration of how to keep the horses, the environment healthy for the horses and the horses healthy and to fit into the whole program. And the necessity of that became so obvious to me that it was extremely important. And that's how I stepped up and said, yes, I'd be happy to try to help. Right. And this really stems back from your love of horses when you were just a tyke, right? Exactly. You loved horses right from the start. I did. <laughs> So there are three main programs now, and they're the Youth Equestrian Showcase, the Youth Ranch Horse Mentor Matchup, and the Youth Freestyle Reining Showcase. It's something really for everyone. What was the objective in the creation of these programs? Well, we, I, I don't take much credit for this. Kendra had a lot to do with okay. us just start thinking about that, and the other people supported it. And it became so obvious that this was a wonderful way, number one, to keep the youth interested, and number two, to put them at a level where they could appreciate the scholarship program of the National Western. And having seen that develop and see how it works, it, it's just a wonderful situation that got me wanting to do 
as much as I could to assist to get it to work. Right. Get these programs rolling and going. Now, these programs not only present an opportunity, but as you sort of mentioned, uh, uh, an avenue for youth to showcase their talents, provide them with recognition and support from the top equine uh, professionals, certainly, and also the element of competition, which is terrific. Otherwise, these young people might not be reached at all, right? And what a tragedy that would be. That would be a real tragedy. Plus, they get to see what a well-organized situation does for everybody. And they get to appreciate the effort that goes into it and gives them an opportunity to see it was not just loading your horse in the trailer and hauling it to the National Western. If it wasn't for the planning and the situation that makes it work, or situations, I should say, they wouldn't have a clue. Because when they drive in that gate, they think they are the number one person. They have no idea about getting back to the ripple effect. They have no idea that that gate person is coming out there and has been talking to cattle people, swine people, sheep people, horse people, etc. And it gives them a realistic approach to why the horse industry has to have that kind of cooperation to work. Right. And that must also give them a respect and also a responsibility to all that is going on. Exactly. Right. So, And that's why these programs are so important, not only to the stock show, but to the kids. That's right. So let's talk about the horse show. And, and tell me, Dr. Beeman, how has it evolved over the years? Well, it's, uh, the evolution of that has been really fascinating. Sure. You, you have to go back and look at the history a little bit about that. The original horses that did show here at the National Western were the American saddlebred horses. And then it evolved into the quarter horses and the hunter jumpers and the gated horses more. And that's how that whole thing evolved. And then originally when we, were, when we had the Quonset huts here. Right, they used to be in Quonset huts, right? <laughs> the, the biggest class was the American quarter horse stallion class the, to evaluate their conformation. It was huge. I mean, by far the biggest class. Well, the environment of the horse world found out that you, they could be pretty, but if they don't work, it doesn't happen. Sure. <laughs> and that's been a fascinating evolution. And, and this working ranch horse thing is a prime example of that. There, you couldn't have gotten three people to come to watch that when I started here. Now it's one of the most popular things because it demonstrates the athletic ability of the horses, the quarter horses, and then the evolution of the, of the Grand Prix. National Western stepped up with a Grand Prix situation that a lot of people came from all over the country to participate in. And that's another example of it showing the public the value and athletic ability of horses. You've, you've got the quarter horses that do the ranch rodeo, the rope and bulldog and all the other neat things that they do. And then you see these hunter jumpers jump these obstacles, especially like in the Grand Prix, jump things that you, people can walk underneath it that high. Right. So, w w you know, the horse is a relatively common animal. In other words, people know what they are. They know what they look like. They've seen them on you know, the Westerns and that sort of thing. But I think people are enthralled with, as you say, what these horses can do. And the more that you show them they can do, the more they ate it up, didn't they? Yeah. And one of the really neat things about the horse program in the National Western, which fits in with the National Western trying to educate the general public about the livestock industry, it shows them what horses can do alongside what the cattle and it all do. And that's critical because of people not understanding in today's world what happens with the agricultural industry. Boy, but the horse is really a shining example of all that, isn't it? Yeah. What would you say, um, maybe youth that are watching this interview uh, right now and who are interested, how do they apply? How do they become involved? Well, just get in touch with the National Western. And Kendra's been absolutely marvelous about getting the information into the horse world and then getting the applications. Yeah. So there is opportunity, but there is a lot to choose from, isn't there? There are a lot of things to choose from. And I understand that the National Western Scholarship Trust Fund gets a lot of credit for funding a lot of these programs. Exactly. Right. That's a good thing to have. And, and isn't, that, isn't that a wonderful thing? And that's another asset to the livestock industry, not just here in Denver, but Colorado and all over the country to see what 
this organization puts back in to stimulate people to be knowledgeable about the agricultural industry and to appreciate it. Right, and how important it is to complete that cycle. Yeah. It really is. As you look back on your long participation and, and all you've accomplished with the National Western, can you think about what you're probably most proud of? I think probably the event center is the most thing that I'm the most proud of. And humbled to the fact that I was asked to participate at the level. They came to you saying, hey, how do we do this and how do we do it right? And you knew or found out and told them, and you got what you asked for, which is really important, isn't it? And I learned a lot of things there that we need to put in the new program, the new building. Ventilation, didn't realize how critical that was. And the footing, all of those things. The ventilation is probably the biggest thing that I didn't, ha I was unaware of it. Who, who would know exactly? And the size, because you said you can always make it smaller, but you can't make it bigger. So you have to have it the right size to, to accommodate everything that goes on. Well, in these uh, crazy times in this year that is 2020, uh, there was 2020, no 2021 stock show for all the right reasons, certainly. What do you think you're gonna end up missing most this year? Well, I'm gonna miss the most of, of seeing the in, involvement with the industry that's what I'm going to miss the most, horse-wise. I'm going to miss watching how effective and how hard the people that make this work, work. I'm always impressed with the people. I've been around long enough, I can tell when they're doing a pretty good job. That's right. And so far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> Following along those lines, let's hope that 2022 is as planned and we have the stock show in its former glory. What are you gonna really be looking forward to? Same sort of, th sort of thing? Yes, uh, I, fortunately I don't have to come and spend days and nights to take care of the horses. My practice still does, but uh, when I first started here, I'd move my wife and children to a close motel so I'd be here all day and all night. What a wonderful commitment, and it's a commitment like that that really made the stock show what it is today. So, Dr. Beeman, we really thank you, part of the Horse Equestrian Program, and all that you've done and all your great contributions. So thank well, you so much for being with well, us today. Well, thank you. I've considered it a privilege, and when you're, you know, when you're asked to use the bat and swing the bat, if you don't step up to bat, then you're dang sure not going to hit the ball. So you, when you're handed it, get do it as best you can. That's that's so true, but a lot of them don't step up and grab the bat. So we're so glad that you did. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.